June 14th will mark the three-year anniversary of the catastrophic Grenfell Tower fire in London, which killed over 70 people. The fire sent shockwaves through the global building safety community, raising alarm over combustible exterior wall assemblies, often referred to in the media as flammable cladding. In the case of Grenfell, highly combustible plastic-laden components, including cladding and insulation, had been added to the facade of the building a few years before the fire. Those materials have largely been cited as one of the reasons the blaze was so deadly, as they fueled and funneled flames and smoke up and around the entire 24-story apartment building at an astonishing pace. But despite the shock and scale of Grenfell, facade fires continue to plague the globe, and experts say they still don't even have an accurate picture of how prevalent these dangerous facade systems are. They say there are likely hundreds, if not thousands, of them scattered across the planet. Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. Just last week, a 49-story residential high-rise in Sharjah, a city in the United Arab Emirates, was aglow with flame. An interior fire had spread to the outside of the building, where it met a combustible facade and exploded in growth. Huge flaming chunks of facade broke off and fell to the ground below, smashing pavement and even vehicles. Astonishingly, there were no casualties, but the incident builds on a history of facade fires in the Middle East. In its aftermath, authorities in Sharjah vowed to strip dangerous cladding off hundreds of other buildings in the city. But we've seen similar promises made in the wake of Grenfell, which simply haven't happened or have moved very slowly. That's because projects to remove and replace combustible cladding and other exterior wall components are extremely difficult and extremely costly. Here's Brigitte Messerschmidt, director of NFPA's Applied Research Division, with more information. And so in terms of, of efforts globally right now to correct some of the um, problems that have been identified in buildings with combustible um, wall components, uh, what, what does that process look like? It's very different from country to country, uh, what, what kind of approach that they choose. I mean, most countries, in, including uh, UAE and also the UK after Grenfell, has, has started with saying at least new buildings have to have uh, facades with uh, either non-combustible or very, very low combustibility. Uh, cladding. Um, but this whole thing about changing the buildings that already exist with these kind of, of dangerous claddings, that is very different from country to country. Some are just putting it on the building owners, uh, others are providing a, a, you know, public funding to help offset it. And yes, there are several different ways. I mean, you can either choose to take off the entire uh, external cladding, you can take off parts of it. The, the problem is that we realized the problem with these cladding panels and, and combustible facades in general too late in that sense that the products had already been put on many, many buildings around the world. And then taking them off again and putting the safer products on is something that is, is a huge task and also very expensive. So even though it has been, you know, asked for in a lot of countries that it should happen, that the progression of this is slow or actually not happening. And therefore, we will continue to see these types of fires because these systems are still out there, they're still on buildings. So it, it, it will be years before we have weeded them all out, if ever. A big part of the problem is that experts like Messerschmitt still don't even have a good idea of how many buildings like Grenfell and like the Sharjah Tower exist throughout the world. Some have said hundreds, some have said thousands. But how did we even get into this situation in the first place? Here's Messerschmitt again with some answers. We wanted to have energy efficient buildings. You know, we wanted to have lower the costs of, of uh, heating and cooling buildings. Um, so that was part of it. Also, it, it, it's you see, especially the, the metal claddings, they can make a really nice looking facade. So it, it almost became a fashion thing uh, for some of the buildings. So it, it was it was easy. It was fairly cheap. Uh, it, it, it served a purpose. Uh, related to energy efficiency. The sunlight reflective and insulating properties of many types of claddings make buildings less costly to heat or cool, and therefore more energy efficient. 
So what are we supposed to do with all of these essentially ticking time bombs? For starters, NFPA has some resources that can help. After Grenfell, the organization moved swiftly to create a facade fire risk assessment tool for building owners and managers, and AHJs to prioritize buildings with the highest risk for facade fires. That tool, which is called Effect, and many other NFPA resources related to combustible exterior wall assemblies, can be found at nfpa.org slash exterior walls. A video of my full interview with Messerschmitt, as well as a conversation I recently had with Anas Al-Zaid, the director of the Middle East North Africa region for NFPA, can be found online at NFPA Exchange. Go to community.nfpa.org to learn more. Thanks for watching. If you like these Learn Something New videos, please let us know by leaving a comment. Like this video, share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this.